The Seahawks' struggles in St. Louis continue, Rex Ryan looks like a genius, and the Denver Broncos don't score a touchdown. I'm Luke Inman with your eDraft update. Well, Rex Ryan looks like a genius after he bumped out Matt Castle and EJ Manuel and bumped in third stringer Tyrod Taylor. Taylor hooked up with Percy Harvin on a long touchdown pass to end the first quarter. The Buffalo Bills never looked back, routing the Indianapolis Colts 27-14, and it really wasn't that close. Andrew Luck attempted nearly 50 pass attempts as his ground game, and Frank Gore simply couldn't outduel the Bills' front seven. Taylor, who went 14 for 19 for 195 yards, added over 50 yards on the ground. Looks like the clear-cut starter next week as the Bills host the New England Patriots. Meanwhile, the Indianapolis Colts, who start out 0-1, host the New York Jets on Monday Night Football. Well, the Seattle Seahawks' woes in St. Louis continue as they fall short in overtime 34-31 to the St. Louis Rams. This game was highlighted by three defensive and special teams touchdowns. Nick Foles, who was facing what was the league's best secondary last year, had a heck of a debut for the St. Louis Rams, going 18 for 27 for 297 yards. Ultimately, expect Cam Chancellor's phone to be ringing off the hook as the Seattle Seahawks must end his holdout this week before they head to Lambeau Field to take on the Green Bay Packers on primetime television. Meanwhile, the St. Louis Rams, who start out 1-0, travel to Washington to play on the Redskins. The Kansas City Chiefs got off to a hot and heavy start in Houston against the Texans in Week 1, jumping out to a 14-0 lead, and they never looked back. Travis Kell, 6 catches, 106 yards, and 2 touchdowns. The Chiefs found different ways to get Jamal Charles the ball, who had over 100 yards all-purpose, and a touchdown as well. Meanwhile, didn't take long for Brian Hoyer to get yanked. Just 3 quarters into the 2015 season, in comes Ryan Mallett, who scores 11 unanswered points. It was just an onside kick away from the eventual tie to that game. Texans travel to Carolina to take on the Panthers in week two. Meanwhile, the Chiefs have a quick turnaround as they host the Denver Broncos on Thursday Night Football. Well, the name James Jones was at the bottom of the list when it came to who was going to replace Jordy Nelson after he tore his ACL this past preseason. After all, James Jones had just signed with the Packers just a few weeks ago, but after his week one performance, rest assured, Aaron Rodgers and the rest of the team is welcoming him back with open arms after he scored not one, but two touchdowns in his Packer debut. He could have had a third had it not been called back for a penalty. Matt Forte dominated on the ground and through the air, over 150 yards all purpose, but it wasn't enough as the Packers beat the Bears in Soldier Field 31 to 23. Jay Cutler went just 18 for 36 and struggled mightily in the red zone. The Bears host the Arizona Cardinals in week two. Meanwhile, the Packers get ready for the NFC Championship Showdown rematch on Sunday Night Football as they host the Seattle Seahawks in Lambeau Field. The Panthers won a sluggish and low-scoring defensive battle in Jacksonville today, 20-9. But while they may have won the battle, they may have lost the war, losing their stud defensive linebacker Luke Keekley to a concussion. Keekley's status remains uncertain as he will go through the concussion protocol later this week. In Week 2, the Panthers host the Houston Texans. Meanwhile, the Jacksonville Jaguars host the Miami Dolphins. The New York Jets took care of business at home, winning 31-10 over the Cleveland Browns, who lose their 11th straight opener. Josh McCown left the game early in the first quarter with a concussion, entered Johnny Manziel, who threw a quick strike to Travis Benjamin for a 54-yard touchdown. But ultimately, the New York Jets had five total takeaways 
and an efficient offense led by Ryan Fitzpatrick, who threw a touchdown pass to Brandon Marshall and Eric Decker, along with Chris Ivory, who had over 90 yards and two touchdowns. The Jets traveled to Indianapolis on Monday night football to take on the Colts. Meanwhile, the Cleveland Browns host the Tennessee Titans. The San Diego Chargers wiped out a 21-3 deficit as they beat the Detroit Lions 33-28 in San Diego thanks to Phillip Rivers' 404-yard passing and two touchdowns, the second of which pulled him even with Dan Fouts for the most in team history at 254. Rivers' go-to target on the day, Keenan Allen, who bounced back from a sophomore slump already in Week 1, catching 15 passes for 166 yards. The Chargers travel to Cincinnati next week to take on the Bengals. Meanwhile, the Detroit Lions travel to TCF Bank Stadium to take on the Minnesota Vikings. Although the Denver Broncos squeaked out a victory at home against the Baltimore Ravens by a score of 19 to 13, the debut of Gary Kubiak teaming up with Peyton Manning was a failure to say the least. Manning went 24-40 for just 175 yards and a salty 59.9 passer rating. In fact, a guy who's known for getting the ball out quickly had four sacks on the day, the most he's had since October 20th, 2013. The worst out of them all, though, Peyton Manning couldn't generate one single touchdown for him or his offense throughout the day. Luckily, his counterpart, Joe Flacco, was even worse. 18 of 32 for 117 yards, two interceptions, a quarterback rating of 38.2. In fact, the only touchdowns on the day didn't come from offense, but on the defensive side of the ball, where Jimmy Smith and Aqib Tlaib both took interceptions to the house for touchdowns for their respected teams. Now, the Broncos have a short week to figure out their offensive woes as they travel to Kansas City to take on the Chiefs on Thursday Night Football. Meanwhile, the Ravens have their own woes to worry about, not just the loss on the field, but the loss in the locker room of Terrell Suggs, the all-pro linebacker, who will be out for the year with a torn ACL. The Ravens travel to Oakland to take on the Raiders next week in Week 2. The rest of the NFL action in Week 1, the Redskins gave the Dolphins everything they had at home. Ultimately fell short 17-10 thanks to a Jarvis Landry punt return for a touchdown in the fourth quarter. The Cardinals and Saints both had 300-yard passers in Carson Palmer and Drew Brees. Ultimately, though, it was the Cardinals' stingy defense that kept Drew Brees in the offense out of the end zone, sticking for field goals most of the game, winning 31-19. First time in NFL history, the first and second overall quarterbacks faced off in week one. It was the Marcus Mariota show this time around, scoring four touchdowns in the first half alone. Jameis Winston's first pass in the NFL went for a pick six. Titans routed the Buccaneers 42-14, and the Bengals stopped all over the Oakland Raiders thanks to two Jeremy Hill touchdowns, 33-13. Derek Carr left the game and did not return. Make sure to check in with eDraft Sports throughout the NFL season. We'll give you all the updates and latest go-to news, highlights, and scores. For everybody at eDraft Sports and eDraft.com, I'm Luke Inman, signing out.